What's going on guys, Scar coming at you with another Magic the Gathering video. In today's video, we dive in into some more decks that I think are pretty good decks based on what I've dabbled in. Uh, there's a, a range of some of these decks that you will be seeing in today's video. Some of them are video decks that you probably have been playing against. Uh, there's definitely one in particular, uh, if my head's not blocking it, that is probably sticking right out you like a sore thumb and this deck is quite annoying but these are some other decks that i think are pretty good and there's actually one of them i think can actually counterbalance the one main deck as long as it's kind of built right but with that being said guys we're just gonna be diving into all these decks we're gonna kind of break them down kind of give you kind of an idea of where you know the meta is currently is for the uh, 2021 mtg uh for post rotation i know this doesn't include zendikar everything can change with zendikar we did get the release of two new planeswalkers uh announced uh chase and uh and nahiri with them being announced it kind of sees where like this is going you know we got equipments and stuff like that but unfortunately right now with the way mtg is that's kind of i feel like not where the meta is currently in 2021 rotation uh magic uh so i think overall we're right now focusing on some key core mechanics of certain things that came out of previous sets like adventure for example uh and you know I'm sure mutate will fall in there and i think in my other video in the post rotation video if you haven't seen that yet i uh, think will probably be popping up somewhere in the top right hand corner over there uh but you know that that is probably a deck that also will be around that you'll see a lot of it but with that being said guys let's dive into these decks these decks are a, a different range there's some aggro there's some control so let me know what you guys think in the comments below but let's dive into these decks all right so the first one up is actually i find to be kind of an interesting deck it plays more into a tribal not in the sense of like you know everything's like a goblin or everything like that um or even like some sort of mechanic like as a like a particular mechanic from a particular set like adventure or something like that but this one is a death touch tribal golgari style deck you may have seen this deck already i kind of think it made an appearance in mtg uh in the basic ladder um when you know m21 first came out and people saw a couple cards from m21 and it kind of dabbled in it but i think because the way the how i feel like the power in current uh standard is kind of weird and very like you know some of these cards are good but they're not to the power level that current standard is i think this deck kind of fell to the wayside and people just went with the best decks or the more powerful decks that are currently in the format but what this deck is trying to do it's playing a lot of creatures even if they're one ones and stuff like that that, are, that have death touch and the thing what they want to do is they want to you know play a lot of these one ones a lot of these cheap things and then you want to get the hooded blight thing on the battlefield then what he does is whenever creature we control with death touch attacks each opponent loses one life and we gain one life and whenever creature control with death touch deals damage to a planeswalker destroy that planeswalker so what essentially this does is now all their little death touch guys whether they block a creature and or, or attack into a planeswalker they're going to kill the thing that they're going to touch even if they only do one damage on top of that regardless of if they do damage they're going to actually ping your opponent for one you're going to gain a life out of it so that's actually pretty good and it's actually more on the more aggressive aggro side their highest converted mana cost card in this particular deck is four which is the quest and beast which is expected because it is a very strong card in the format as a whole just because it's a four drop four four vigilance death touch and then the whole ability that if it deals damage to a player, it'll deal that much damage to a planeswalker they control. And damage that uh, creatures that you deal can't be prevented, I think, is the other thing. So that's also very good. I don't think there's really any fog style decks in the format, but that's always good to have just in case they have some sort of preventative way to prevent that damage. But what the deck does is plays things like Falmir Knight with the Death Touch and also the Adventure if you really want to draw a card and lose a life. Moss Viper for a cheap 1 1 Death Toucher. Agonizer more for a little bit of hand hate. Uh, you know, always good to hand hate your opponent and or even the graveyard. So if they're playing some that is graveyard centric, like unfortunately it's not gonna be very good against like cycling, but it can remove at least a card from cycling or get rid of that particular Xenia Flare. Definitely the Uros, things like that, that can try to return back in the graveyard. Anything that can escape back is always good to get with the Agonizer Remorse. Heartless Act for the spot removal, though I would say that I depend on, I don't know what camp you're on, but I think it's right now a partial battle between if people like Heartless Act or Eliminate. I think one one can lean one way or the other, just be depending on where the aggressiveness is of the format. I feel like either or will work, uh, just because of two damage removals and not many things are playing plus one plus one counters as of right now but that could all change and then we got the mire trying to throw some things in the graveyard and gain some life also has death, death touch so that's always good um but always some things in the graveyard is good just because we've also played fiend artisan in the deck which is a card that gets benefits of having more creature cards in your graveyard so even if uh you know you throw a lot of creatures in your graveyard fiend artisan is just gonna get that much stronger uh then we got Cheville, which is another very solid i think legendary creature that i think kind of fell off after ikoria came out uh it's a very solid thing that you get to put death uh 
You get to put a bounty counter on a, permanent, a creature your opponent controls. If that creature would die, you would gain three life and draw a card, which is pretty good. And then especially in this Death Touch Tribal deck, he's going to be very, very good in that sense. Fiend Artisan, of course, it gets plus and plus one for each creature card in your graveyard, as well as you can tap X and a black or green and sacrifice a creature, another creature. We get to search our library for a creature card when it costs X, put that card into the battlefield, then stuff for your library, activate this ability only time you cast sorcery. So if we get into like the later game and we want to just get rid of our little one ones, maybe get rid of all Moss Viper, we really need that Hooded Blade Fang to start doing real damage. We can always Always sacrifice one of our smaller creatures to go fetch that hooded play thing uh which is definitely a good way to get that uh, extra damage um though at the same time too if you want to do this probably when the fiend artisan is probably not too tough but fiend artisan's ability that is going to be very good in that sense of course the quest and beast two castle lock veins nine swamps seven forests a couple temple miladies and some available passages to search it up this is actually a pretty decent deck curves out very very well um though i will say the one thing that you may notice if you've been playing this rotation style of magic is that the man is a little clunky just because everything comes into play tap it's not as aggressive as it is but we this could all change when zendikar comes out they haven't really announced anything i have a couple speculations i don't think they're going to do fetch lands we're going to go fetch for particular lands and take some damage i think there may be some other way i actually personally really want check lands i don't know if you really know what they are but we can talk about it at the end of the video but let's move on to the next deck and break that that, that one down all right so the next deck up is a deck i think also was a thing uh, I've seen uh, CGB run this actually recently, but I also saw it ran back when certain cards ran out. And that is Mono Blue Devotion. It's actually kind of cool combo. It actually does take a lot of work um, in the sense of how it works. But the whole idea here is we want to build up a bunch of devotion and we want to play Thoss as the Deep Dwellin'. If you don't know what Thoss as the Deep Dwellin' is, uh, it Wait, no, that Thassa is the Dwellin'. Thoss is Oracle. Sorry, I apologize. Uh, Thoss is Oracle. It's a two mana, one three. It doesn't look too impressive, but the ability here is we get to look at the top X of our library. X is number of devotion of blue. We get to put one of them cards on top, the rest on the bottom of the library in any order. If X is greater than equal or equal to the number of cards in our library, we win the game. So the idea here is we want to build up our devotion and and kind of deck ourselves. So it's like a self mill style deck. And I think this is actually probably the best way to currently in Magic is the best way to kind of mill in a way because you're not really trying to mill against your opponent you're trying to mill yourself so what we're trying to do is we're trying to play things a lot of things with devotion so if you notice here a lot of things in the deck have double blue or even triple blue or are like in the sense of arcanist out it's actually quadruple blue which is pretty crazy and the idea here is you want to combine this you want to combine this with a nyx lotus which is uh choose a color add that amount of that color into your devotion to that color so if we have devotion of six we can tap it and get six mana and if we play this on turn four bound, uh, untaps turn five we get to play it you know have six devotion maybe on the board then you cast a gadwick with this high devotion and the goal here is what you kind of want to do the combo is in essence is you want to get a cast like a very big gadwick and how you do that because you'd be like well you only tap it once and you get six mana or whatever mana well you combine it with this card called corridor monitor which is a two drop one four and when it enters the battlefield you get to untap target artifact and or a creature we control and what that does is then untaps next lotus which you can then tap again for that one you know that additional mana uh and then you would go up higher devotion you get to play a couple more things and you kind of slowly build up your devotion up to a, a very decent amount and then you can cast a very giant gadwick and and draw like 20 something cards at one time and almost nearly deck yourself and then maybe keep a couple mana open and you drop a thoss you drop a you drop a thoss's oracle the other thing too what you will do here is you can also even blink uh, certain things on the battlefield that to make their effects go off again so you can blink like another quarter monitor to about to, at the end of your turn to untap your next lotus to keep it open maybe on your opponent's turn you can tap an arcanist owl if you really want to dig for artifact or enchantment which you know in essence you can always dig for that thought so you can always dig for a next lotus if you're missing it um you can also dig for a quarter monitor if you're missing it uh which one is a good way to draw some cards maybe in the early game also scry a little bit uh baron is actually very strong in the sense that it's kind of like a pretty decent devotion card that bounces target creature and in a way if we bounce one of our own things we can always bounce another quarter monitor in a way and then we can replay it and then do the effect again so there's definitely a cool little interesting ways and it's pretty interesting to when you get it right and you mill yourself uh it does feel good in a way and your opponent's probably caught off guard because they're like oh this person's just drawing a bunch of cards but if once they figure it out usually typically if you start milling yourself you usually have the combo they may just scoop the game and they realize what you're doing but overall this is a fun deck it actually i would say it's on the inexpensive side i mean there are a few rares in the deck of course but these are some rares that you may have come across uh in your playthrough of magic the gathering um but 
I'm sure there's other things you can replace, but the goal here is we want to get the very high devotion. Uh, so this is definitely a fun deck. I think if you want to play something that's a little combo uh, centric, it definitely helps you kind of figure out uh, the intricacies of how things work. Like this is definitely one of those decks where you want to play around with using full control because there's ways that you can get additional uh, additional taps for mana with the next Lotus because like you play your quarter monitor, but before you untap it, you like tap it. And you get that one extra mana so it's like cool things like that that help you kind of trick around and kind of you know mess around with the whole uh full control but this is definitely a deck to check out it's definitely cool i will definitely have all the lists for these decks in the description down below so in case you want to check them out they'll be listed there all right so the next deck up is kind of a deck that i feel like has been bopping around in a way and with rotation happening it kind of like lost a little bit but that deck is currently gruel adventures and the idea here is you want to kind of like this deck takes advantage of playing like your adventure spells you know you're playing your robber the rich or playing your remark knights playing your bone crusher giants playing your love struck beasts playing your you know get drawn cards with the edge wall innkeeper and it has a couple little spicy things in there but the idea here is like kind of aggressive aggro deck and again it's more on the mid like on the aggro aggressive side so the goal here is to maybe get really get your opponent really low by turn four turn five swing it in with a big old ember cleave and finish the game but the goal here is it helps you draw because the one thing that happened in in rotation is that you that this style of aggro lost its way to kind of scoop a little bit deeper and that is with um and that is late at the stage so the goal here is we kind of use edgewall innkeeper to be kind of our card digger but the difference is that unfortunately these cards when you draw them they aren't kind of protected how they were with late at the stage but overall the deck does play a decent amount of adventure cards to take advantage of the edgewall innkeeper so the idea is you play your edgewall innkeeper on like turn one possibly that's really our only one drop then you can pl always play like a robber the rich on turn two you can always then cast uh, a boulder rush on something to you know pump something but then you can also play the other side of rimrock knight to get the card from card draw from edgewall innkeeper uh we have scavenging ooze for that graveyard uh eden which is always getting in cycling and getting rid of those er pesky arrows bone crusher giant here like i said it's a very good card regardless i think any deck that has red in it probably should just play bone crusher giant just because of its double ability um it's just that solid of a card with a two mana two damage to any target can't be prevented and the three drop four three and if and they target with a spell it you know deals two damage i uh, love struck beast is in here for the one one and also the five five body uh you can kind of work your way up if you really wanted to i think you could also think about throwing in the nine mana artifact for this and you know getting that plus one plus one counter and the draw card every time you play a creature and also tapping it down for two plus two life and two green mana that's all possibility quest and beast is in here ember cleave like i said because it's the big finisher you know you get to turn three turn four then a lot of damage going that one big swing with like three or four guys throw ember cleave on like your love struck beast or something like that even your scavenge and ooze it by that point it could be game just the, your opponent might just scoop because once they see the ember cleave happen though it, i would say with the simic adventures that kind of ro rolling around that is a deck that you gotta watch out for because they can always brazen bar whatever you're going to target with ember cleave yada 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 but that is something to look out for but if you get a very good hand you can definitely definitely get catch your opponent by surprise and get them really quick the other thing too is this deck actually plays gem razor too which is i think very strong in a way just because of the the lucky clover this kind of can target that can kind of target any pesky enchantments on the battlefield in case they play like a doom foretold or something like that that kind of targets you know makes you start sacrificing things or even getting rid of something that you just don't want on the battlefield if they do play like a vanishing light or something that may take one of your creatures you can always do something like that and get just get rid of it and mutate it onto anything with plus one plus one counters like a scavenging ooze you can mutate, on, mutate onto so it gets whatever the it gets the four four plus whatever counters are on it so it definitely becomes stronger also has radha here which is actually very interesting as well because uh we get to play with the top of our, our card or library revealed you get to play land cards from the top of our library which you can kind of dig a little bit deeper get to the uh tap six get plus x plus x or x is number of lands we control so by the time you usually tap for this because we don't play any mana pumpers you are tapping it it's gonna be uh, it's gonna get a six six additional damage so it's a nine nine maybe throw an ember cleave on it ten ten double strike trample definitely can finish off games right then and there like i said this is definitely a very interesting deck to play uh it is kind of like that mixture aggressive deck uh, it, it it the one problem is yet again it gets a little slow and clunky sometimes as you can see here it plays more basics in this deck compared to more tap lanes kind of like in the previous deck uh in the way that so it can play more aggressive you know because nothing's worse than playing the aggro deck and having a land come to play tapped though it is always good to have a land come to play tapped and maybe scribe but you know especially in the early game you want to play things on curve you don't want to be uh you know you know 
turn behind in a sense of playing things because you had to play that one tap land also play some fatal passages to kind of fix your mana just because most of the cards other than emberclave and quest and beast most of the other cards are just single color uh costs other than the rat head which is a red and a green but everything else is just more of a one one of one color and color this so that's always good but this is definitely a fun deck to check out if you want to play something a little bit more aggressive i it's probably not in the same ballpark as current gruel in current standards because you're missing very very strong cards that just make this deck that much better the other thing too is you can always play uh which i'm very surprised isn't here and it isn't in here but you can always play the serpent just to you know play a thing that has reach and trample already and you know you can always you can always mutate onto there i think it's always a safe play but i think this deck is trying to utilize by more so playing adventure card adventure creatures to get cards with a draw innkeeper just trying to keep like your hand full at some times but i would say play around with it make it kind of unique to your yourself but this is definitely a good good deck to start with maybe and kind of branch out from there depending on how the meta shapes out but this is a fun deck regardless so the next deck up is a very interesting deck and this is a deck i briefly mentioned in the sense of just one particular card but this is pretty much esper doom foretold uh and if you don't know what doom foretold is it's pretty much an enchantment here that at the end of each player's like upkeep that player sacrifices a non -line permanent permanent non-token permanent if that player can't they discard a card they lose to life you draw a card you gain two life and you create a 2-2 two -two knight creature token with vigilance and you sacrifice doom foretold so the idea here is in a way uh, so what Doom Foretold is to kind of like if your opponent's playing something slow or maybe they're not playing a very aggressive board that pretty much forces them to sacrifice the permits they physically have on the battlefield until they can't. And in a way, I think a lot of times too is a lot of times people don't want to, people just want to keep on playing things on the battlefield because they never want to feel behind. And in a, I, I feel with the way the current meta is, it does play slower. So it does definitely play into what Doom Foretold is trying to do. And this deck is just playing a whole bunch of things that I think are you know very very good and i think this is definitely one of those decks that could combat the the simic mutate uh the simic mutate the simic adventures deck that is currently floating around in the meta for 2021 magic and the idea here behind it is is my thinking is that they're also kind of in a way playing more responsive magic and that they're not really playing too too much aggressively they're kind of playing more reactive in the sense that they want to make sure they get their lucky clovers they you know they want to get their edge keepers are setting up for their love struck beasts with the one ones and my idea is that the, the one ones are tokens the the innkeeper is a one one creature that you could always make them sacrifice to doom foretold as well as if they play a lucky clover but they only have a board presence but they and they're maybe tapped out they may have the sacrifice that to doom foretold so it's a good way in that sense and i kind of tweaked this in a way to kind of combat you know decks that you know utilize the graveyard and also try to return things back from the graveyard in a way because you can already see on the top of the deck list i actually played termort's crypt in in main board because i don't really play the blue to get the fey wishes to kind of you know go search for it later and kind of return it and do it that way so termart's crypt is actually in the main board just to kind of combat possibly playing things like cycling and or even decks that contain uro or anything that tries to tries to return things from the graveyard i feel like it's just good to you know just empty the graveyard on them you know it's always annoying when they have pesky things with with escape but you know we played termart's crypt there's bit the Melitus to kind of you know get some more planes from our library add them to our hand kind of filter out that mana Open the season here because it's always a good thing to sacrifice to a doom foretold you know get the draw out of it um and scry so that's definitely very strong eliminate heartless act you could probably do one or the other like if you want to play four copies of one four copies of the other uh you can make that choice we're right now splitting down the middle just because you know uh eliminate's good in the early game especially against like the cheap decks that play a lot of cheap aggro creatures heartless act is good for the late game even if the creature has no plus one plus counters it's always just good to remove something that's just very very large uh with a heartless axe so that's always good in that sense then we got the maze my tome to kind of like scry a little bit to dig for what we're looking for uh we can also tap it to draw a card and if we have four more page counters on it we get to exile it if we do gain four life if worst case scenario you can always sacrifice it to doom foretold to get a couple scries out of it before you do that treasure's blessing is a way for us to dig a little bit deeper if we want to fill our hand back up if we just want to draw three additional cards the only downfall is whenever we cast a spell when this is on the battlefield we lose one life this is definitely the first thing you want to sacrifice when it comes to do foretold so that's kind of why we play it it's like the the th plus three cards is worth us playing do foretold to only have sacrifice later though it could get really risky in the late game and it's something that you may want to you know if you don't really have a do foretold or you don't see one in your future it's something that you may want to stay away from especially if playing opponents playing someone super aggressive of course we got the shadow of this guys because you don't want to keep the board clean you could also probably think of extinction event as, if that's something you want to play maybe it's balanced between one or the other the one downfall with shadow of the sky currently is that your opponent draws a card if they have really big creatures um 
so that's the only downfall but you all we also draw a card in that sense as well one card i actually i i've been playing around with just because of like the adventure decks that are playing like a lot of tokens is actually Karavek, the spit the spiteful just in the sense that it's a four mana other creatures get minus one minus one he's a three two um but the idea is it kills all your opponents one one tokens that they're trying to make with these adventure decks to make their love struck beast attack and it doesn't put any of their other creatures um in a way able to uh help the love struck beast attack because they don't really play two twos and things like that so it definitely slows them down in that sense the other thing too is they can't also play the they can't play the brazen borrower side of their brazen borrower because of this card because the instant the minute moment it comes in that brazen borrower flyer is instantly dead which also slows them down in the air which kind of slows them down overall um it's just something i was playing around with there's only two copies in here because i think you don't want to play too many copies just because i think i'm leaning kind of into that anti-meta in the sense of i just don't really like the adventure decks in the way that they try to like you know get wide also kind of in a weird way slows down all those uh cycling decks too because a lot of those creatures come in very small but eventually become problem some and in you know annoyance so that's definitely good of course the doom foretold which is the main enchantment of the deck uh because it you know it does the things elspeth conquers death you can probably run more of this but i feel like the way the meta is balanced right now there's a lot of cheap things so elspeth conquers that can just get those couple big things that people are playing uh and in the way we can always return it later with the dance of the mans or even flicker it with a yorian if we if we can kind of turn that do that like turn sequence you know play the elspeth conquers death the fallen turn follow up with the yorian maybe target something else if they're playing multiple things that are very large in cost uh of course yorian to kind of flicker things out you know get double you know birth of the melatus effects omen the sea effects reset your maze mind tomes reset your treasure blessings so on and so forth that's definitely a good thing there and if we get a lot of those things enchantments eventually go to the graveyard we can always tap x and blue and white and we can turn x artifacts and or non or enchantment cards with the equipment and it costs x or less more graveyard if x is six or more those permanents call our four four creatures and additional other types so essentially if we get the board clean we can then swing it back in with all these enchantments which we can always get back at doom foretold to then just swing in with a whole bunch of things and they kind of like would have to go through all the cycles again definitely a very strong deck and this one's a little tricky just in the sense that this deck is definitely very heavy tap land sense you know we got four copies of temple of silence four copies of temple of the seeds two ragrin triomes one zagnoth triome and four failed passages we also have one island one swamp and five planes and also cast an arnhem veil to create some tokens in case we need some just chump blockers uh but overall it's a very interesting deck in that sense it's just trying to you know make our opponent not really play a clean board kind of tax their board a little bit to kind of like allow us to kind of just overwhelm them with a bunch of enchantments and just kind of swing in big with a big dance of the mance and or you know just 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 try to kill them that way all right so the last deck up here is simic adventures this is definitely a deck that is very strong because it's just trying to do two things it's trying to uh abuse the effect of lucky clover and it's just trying to play like really good cards as quickly as possible uh the idea is here if you haven't seen this deck is the idea is that you just kind of want to abuse the effect of interval innkeeper because everything in the deck is adventure so you want to draw as many cards as possible with your adventure side of your creatures you want to use the lucky clover so you can get multiple copies of the spell side of all your adventure cards and eventually you just want to get into a great henge and just start playing things like this and uro and love struck beast and get these plus one plus one counters and just get these really big creatures that your opponent just can't deal with because you get the double effects of the brazen borrower you get the double effects of the fail wishes double effects of the the mirrorfolk secret keeper double effects of the beanstalk giant so you're just playing these uh the the sorcery and the spell side of these cards multiple times so you could have a lucky two lucky clovers down play a brazen borrower bounce three things and pretty much reset your opponent's board in a way that all they have is lands out now um you know love struck beast now you get three one one ones and then you play the love struck beast and then your love struck beast is kind of safe because unless they can burn multiple love one ones the love struck beast is definitely going to attack you know get multiple things from your wish board with fate of wishes you know we got a fancy wish board here um it's I, I i'll be quite honest this is the the exact copy i copy this exactly from cgb's video if you haven't seen that one but he pilots this deck and his deck just kind of like just tears through a lot of what the meta is currently in this uh in the way he just you know he plays it very very well this is one of those decks that you do have the sequence sometimes certainly especially in a mirror matchup in the right way because you definitely can do things in a wrong sequence and kind of you know either tap yourself out and then get caught off guard with something 
but if you get to what you need to and kind of like ramp up in the proper way you eventually can just you know play a lot of this stuff get into your wish board which you know you, there's a whole bunch of things to kind of just overtake your opponent and just overwhelm them in that sense uh you know torment script for the cycling decks miscast if you want to you know counter the decks that are very limited on mana make them pay three unsummon to bounce something back miss a repeal to get rid of an enchantment on the bottom of the library shadow spirit to make anything that you control trample ramp through to combine with your shadow spirit any of your creatures that are just very large return to nature to destroy possibly a mirror matchup destroy um ember cleave exile particular card from graveyard if you don't have a tomorrow's crypt maybe you already used it source of spyglass to lock anything down neutral live as another counter spell sleep to just which is a very interesting card they brought back but taps down all your opponent's creatures once in the future to get anything back um and target card from your graveyard to your hand put one on the top of your target card on top of your graveyard on top of your library exile once in the future but if it lasts three green instead of return those cards to your hand exile once in the future so pretty much you can return two cards from your library to your hand overflow and insight just to draw seven cards maybe make your opponent draw seven cards to possibly mill them uh ugin just to wipe their board out especially in cycling this is that ugin's very strong in the sense that nothing in cycling costs more than like two so you can ugin for two primal might because just fight things and just maybe swing in with the top with a shadow spear and the radiant fountain because you never know when that extra life is gonna be good but this deck is just just that strong and these are just some decks guys if uh you're very interested in just kind of getting some insight of maybe what you may see in the meta or these are things you may want to try out in the meta if you're still trying to figure out what you want to play in post rotation magic uh let me know what you guys think about these videos in the comments below if there's a video popping up on the side here you can always click on one of those i'm sure youtube's trying to recommend you a video that's somewhat related to this video it definitely helps out the channel if you decide to watch one of those videos but if you like the video hit that like button if you want to know i post more videos hit that subscribe button but i'll catch you in the next video